TG Geeks, episode 303, December 7th, 2020. Apparently, there is no vacation from Staycation. Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery, sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I'm Keith Lane, and we're coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm Ben Raginton, also coming to you from... Lovely Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, I have nothing pithy I to got, say. Yeah, I got time. nothing. <laughs> Prepare for hyperdrive. Well, oops. whoops. Meanwhile, there we go. In the Hall of Episodes, the two gay geeks are discussing this. Got derailed there I got for a moment. D- distracted. <laughs> Well, in this episode, we are going to talk to somebody we haven't talked to in a while, Mr. Russ Emanuel. Russell Emanuel, he is a filmmaker, and he's got a new film that we're going to talk about. And uh, it sounds really kind of exciting, and we're, we may have some follow-up interviews uh, associated with Fingers that. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Then we'll have our regular birthday shout-outs, our featured podcast of the week, and everybody's favorite feedback, and well as shout-outs. In our second segment, we're going to talk about a couple of things uh, real briefly and our weekly recap and our regular shout out. So let's get right to it. And we welcome back to our show, Mr. Russell Emanuel, who is a uh, prolific director, and uh, we've talked to him about a number of his projects. Welcome back to the show, Russ. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So you have a new project that uh, that we ran uh, uh, a press release for uh, earlier last week, and it's a, a film that is uh, that you've already shot, and you're looking for some finishing funds for this. So. Tell us about this project that you're doing. Uh, what is what is staycation? Tell us about that first. Well, the the tagline is no vacation from staycation, <laughs> but um, it, it's a it's a film. Um, basically, uh, it's in the horror genre, um, and uh, we do have uh, three Star Trek actors: um, Olivia Dabo, who was also in Star Wars, uh-huh. uh, including the last Star Wars film, The Rise of Skywalker. Um, and we have Sean Kenny, who's uh, crippled Captain Pike, yeah, in the original I, Star Trek series. I thought I recognized that name. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and uh, ironically, there is a wheelchair in the uh, film. But oh, he didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> oh, 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 oh it, it's it's, <laughs> it's not, not some it's it's not Sean some <laughs> it's not some deliberate <laughs> Easter egg <laughs> then for him. <laughs> no, 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 no. But he's like, why is there a wheelchair in here? I'm like, trust me, Sean, this is part of the film. Um, and then we have uh, Tracy Lee Coco as a really good friend. Uh, so it was Sean, but it was Sean and his wife, Taki. Uh, but Tracy, uh, Tracy Coco was uh, uh, a featured background on uh, many of the Star Trek TV shows, like The Next Generation, where she played Lieutenant J. Mm-hmm. And she's been in uh, three of the uh, Next Generation feature films. So oh. the, we have uh, those three Star Trek actors. Um, we have, um, my lead, uh, Bailey Sorrell, who plays Kathy and, uh, Jill Streicher, who plays Matt. Um, and they're just phenomenal. And, um, you know, we, we had a really good crew. We filmed in, um, Burbank at Envision 8 Studios, oh, wow. um, over the weekend of November 14th. So we literally just got it done, like. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Wow, that's Weekends amazing. Ago, you could say. So yeah. this is. Uh, I, I noticed that you didn't say anything about Robert Picardo. This has got to be your first film yeah, without right. Robert, correct? Oh well, let's let's put it this way. I um, staycation is the first twenty five percent of a of a feature. 
And I invested in a uh, camera package at the uh, beginning of this year in January, uh-huh. right before COVID struck. Great timing. <laughs> exactly. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Nobody knew what would happen, you know, that it'd get this severe. And, you know, I, I do hope it gets better. I really do. Oh, and, yeah. You know, people are staying safe. But that said, we got this camera package. It's a nice uh, 6K resolution camera. Wow. Um, yeah, it's uh, the Panasonic Lumix mirrorless. So I invested, you know, a good deal of my money um, for future films. And uh, what happened was, um, uh, and I'm going to get back to Robert Picardo, but uh, so we did a, a test, a test film called Routine, which is the prequel to Staycation. And uh, we did that in April during the lockdowns. And it was, it was a test, a camera test, basically. And done in my condo uh, with a, a non-screen actress, build actress, a wonderful actress named Paige Bussell. Um And it was just the three of us, myself, the DP, Emil Harris, who's the other half of, you know, the staycation franchise, if you want to call it that. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we uh, uh, basically, uh, basically deals with pandemic. And um, I, I don't want to really give it away, but it is in the horror genre. Okay. So, you know, that, that's probably a, a big, a, a little bit of a reveal. But, you know, I just yeah. want to tell. It's definitely in the horror genre. Um, and this uh, little film, which is, again, a test. It was a test. A test film. Right. Um, it was just, you know, four minutes, 33 seconds long. Uh, it got into one of the top genre festivals in the United States called um, uh, Film film quest and got into other festivals that I've never gotten into like Coney Island or wow. Big Apple. And it basically, um, ignited some interest in, um, uh, my soon to be executive producers. So investors in the film and my game plan from the beginning of doing staycation, um, which again is a sequel to routine, um, was to get, uh, investors, uh, so we could fund production and then do um, uh, crowdfunding for post-production. So um, I was very lucky and very fortunate and very grateful to get a group of uh, executive producers uh, who believed in me. And, um, you know, they funded the project. And we were able to film it with actors like Olivia, uh, Sean, uh, Tracy, Jill, um, Bailey, and a slew of others. And so getting back to Robert Picardo, because this is the first 25% of a feature, um, there's going to be more that we can film, especially uh-huh. since I own the camera. Uh-huh. I own the camera. <laughs> so we're going to, we have this, the exact camera that we use to film vacation and routine. Right, and we're going to be using that camera. There's a reason I invested in that camera. Well, exactly. So yeah. There's more. Yeah. So there, there is. Trust me, I, I am going to approach Bob. Um, and uh, Bob doesn't know this yet, but I will approach him. Maybe he will hear your show. He'll go, Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> I, oh can, I can so only I, hope that he yeah. would listen to our show. Uh, it, it, would, it would thrill me to no <laughs> end if he listens to this. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I definitely want to want to have Bob on this. So, um, and I, I want to involve my producer, Howard, Howard Nash, um, right. when it comes to the future version of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So trust me, I, uh, love Bob. I love Howard and I love you guys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've been, uh, on a rewatch of Star Trek Voyager and I'm, I'm always amazed at the breadth of, of, Robert Picardo's work. I mean, what he can do from one to the, to the next and then what he's done with you. And it's just amazing anyway. So that's, uh, oh, he, he's, 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 he's such a, he's a very smart guy. He has wonderful ideas. I mean, I remember watching him from, uh, you know, uh, amazing stories to, uh, total recall. Right. The 1990 version. Oh yeah. The yeah. New yeah. One. yeah. Um, yeah, Stargate. Um, yeah, he's just been in so many wonderful things. I hope he's in Star Trek Picard. 
know, yeah, I, I that, that would, would be, be nice. Amazing if he reprises the role of the doctor. So exactly, yeah, he's a wonderful guy. Yeah. So uh, this staycation. Tell us about. Um, you, you've told us about what the film is and who's in it, and now you've got uh, you know obviously uh, a lot of that done, and you've got this Indiegogo campaign. Tell us about that and. So most things, I, I like to plan things out. You, you may you may have noticed that about me. I'm, I'm definitely a perfectionist. I'm right. a workaholic, and yep. I tend to be a hypochondriac too. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just worry. You know, what if what if uh, you know force majeure, act of God is called. There's a legal term. Uh, what if force majeure happens? Um, you know, what if the, one of the actors gets sick, or you know, what what if uh, the set is shut down? It has happened. You know, before in previous productions, not mine. Fortunately, but it has happened. So I try to plan things like as as much as possible. Uh, one thing that I didn't foresee was COVID, and COVID is something very new. Obviously, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's forced everybody to do something so, different. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and I, again, I hope everybody's staying safe because you know this this is this is a real virus. I, I have chronic asthma, so you know, for me, uh, I have a respiratory condition already. So you know, I, I'm one of those people that you know could potentially even die. Uh, from, we understand. Like we so get I, that. I, I take it very seriously. Uh, we get that I take too. It very seriously. And I, I want to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say no. We get that too. Keith, Keith and I both have compromised respiratory systems, so we understand the the, the hyper vigilance that is required around this little virus. Yeah. No, I, I hope you two are staying safe. I really do. Oh, we're very um, much staying safe. You and, your, <laughs> you, and your ki- you and your kitties. Oh, you God, yes, cats, our so. four cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's always. Go team kitties is what I say. But, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, because of COVID, um, because I know, you know, because I have respiratory conditions. I've had bronchitis in the past. I've had pneumonia in the past. Um, so, you know, trust me, I, I know what it's like to have a respiratory illness. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, the cast and crew stays safe, um, and uh, especially since we had actors like Olivia, uh, Chun, and Tracy. Uh, number one, I did not want to get them sick, obviously. Um, number two, we had to go through the Screen Actors Guild, SAG AFRA, mm-hmm. right. um, and they were very strict, very strict um, uh, in terms of COVID compliance. So uh, the cost of COVID, COVID precaution. Um, a COVID compliance officer, PPE kits, uh, air, air filtration units, um, you know, just hand sanitizers, hand sanitizer stations, you just name it. I mean, it's just, it, it was a lot. It was a lot more than, than I thought. It ended up being maybe uh, 10 to 20% of the budget. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. The budget. It's, it's and, pretty... And um, we had to, it's a lot. <laughs> we had to do a COVID test, you know. Um, and, of course, for my main cast, I, we, we paid for those tests. Uh, fortunately, there are free tests um, that we're able to take if you live in California. And I, I don't know. I'm sure that there's, there's that's the case in Arizona. Right. Yeah. Um, but in California, there is, you know, sites you can go to get free tests. So um, you had a test. Uh, on a, we filmed on a Saturday, so if you are working on a Saturday, you had a test on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on the turnaround, and you had to get the results by the time you get to the set. And of course, you have to test negative. So there was a lot of unknowns. You know, what if somebody tested positive, or what if somebody took the wrong test? Because you have to take a very particular test, right? A PCR DNA test or a rapid molecular test. So. There were so many unknowns. I didn't even know if we <laughs> were filming until <laughs> maybe 9 p.m. Friday. Wow. Uh, you know, and we're filming Saturday at 8. <laughs> so it, it was a lot of stress. And it was expensive. It was expensive. So uh, I, I digress a little. So getting back, that's one reason. we Again, the game plan was to do the campaign for post. Uh, but, yeah, COVID was added expenses. Right. Um and that's when, you know, the primary reason that we're doing the campaign right now. Uh, right. That said, though, um, you know, 
with, with the Indiegogo campaign, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to, you know, it's not just we're asking for money, you know, we're, we're going to give something in return. You know, that, that's why it's a crowdfunding. Um, you know, there's, there's perks like, uh, we have in universe t-shirts. So we had a brand of, uh, cigarettes that uh, one of the characters, I won't name who, but they smoked it. And um, it's called El Gato Cigarette, and that stands for the cat. Right, <laughs> so you. If you notice, I put, I put cats in my film, so I do love cats. Um, and it's an in-universe uh, cigarette brand that we're going to be using in the feature, and hopefully more, you know, uh, whatever uh, we can do, comic book tie-ins like we did for my feature film, Occupant. Right. Um uh, same, same thing, you know, so I, I'm thinking big, you know, I'm thinking franchising. Right. So we have in universe t-shirts. Um, we have, uh, you know, of course, some DVDs, we have a signed poster, um, you know, and uh, we have even, you know, uh, you could put your photos or a cameo, film a cameo in the film itself. Hmm. Because again, it's, um, this is a film where, uh, if you've seen a film like Host on uh, Shudder mm-hmm. um, or Unfriended, Unfriended is another film that inspired me. It's basically people talking to the camera, and a lot of the film is like that. So we're going to have a lot of scenes, of, since this is a global pandemic that you're dealing with in the film, of people all over the world uh, talking about this. It's kind of like what I did with Occupant. Um, right, right. Where we had people talking about uh, paranormal phenomena, parallel universes. This is what that film was about, which starred our good friend, Bob Picardo. So um, I'm employing the same idea for this. And that's where we can do these cameos, we call them, whether it's a photo cameo um, or a, a video camera cameo. You know, whether you film um, with your own camera, like your iPhone or your, your laptop, or you come and we film you, you know, with my camera, with our camera package, you know. And a lot of it, again, is people just talking uh, like uh, as if you're a YouTuber, you know, you're just talking to the screen. Right. And we can film with a green screen background. Um, we could have product placement. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And we're going to have like... Uh, uh, like commercials, you know, fake commercials, uh, kind of like in uh, RoboCop. Mm-hmm. Do you remember RoboCop, you know, back from the 1987 right. films, and I think even the two sequels that they did in 1990 and 93, mm-hmm. they had commercials in those films, you know. I'd buy that for a dollar. dollar or yeah. The sunscreen lady. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the 3,000, S- yeah, yeah, that was great. Or 3,000, yeah, where she's all blue. She's all blue. It, it, it's so con- it's so contrived and funny. I mean, that was the whole point of doing those commercials, you know? And it kind of uh, it broke up the, the dramatic nature of, you know, the RoboCop film, especially the second one. It was very dark, mm-hmm. you know? So these commercials help to bring uh, break that up. So we're going to have stuff like that. And that's part of what we can do with the cameos, you know, uh, for both um, uh, Staycation the Short and Staycation the Future. Because, again, you know, we can film a lot of this um, and integrate it. Um, into the eventual feature. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I would say a good 40% of the film is like that. And this is, again, was planned, by the way. So, you okay, know? so... Th- uh, we were thinking about this. R- so. this. This sounds incredibly interesting, but I, I, I still have one question, and that is, what is Staycation about? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Staycation is about a global pandemic... Um, that's ravaging the globe, obviously, the globe. And it's uh, basically about what people do, you know, um, you know whether it, they go into lockdown um, and, and the repercussions of that and how it affects uh, normal, everyday citizens. At the same time, you like Matt and Kathy in the film. And at the same time, you have uh, Sean Kenny's character, Professor Edward Bellows. And he's to be interviewed by journalist Grace Baxter, played by Olivia Dabo. And basically, he's the lead virologist in the United States. And, you know, basically, he's trying to combat this pandemic that's going on. Um, but uh, I, I don't want to give it too much away, but let's just say that uh, things are not going as well as planned. And when you watch Staycation in the Shorts, um, you will understand 
And mm-hmm. when it goes into the eventual feature, you'll definitely understand. But it's it's definitely in the horror genre, you know. Um, it, it is dealing with re- real life issues like COVID, you know, which is really you know what everybody around the globe is dealing with right now, you know. So when people watch this film, they'll think COVID. Okay, but it's it's more than that. I, I can't really give too much away, but yeah, I Trust okay. Me, it, okay. It, very, it, it's very surprising what happened. All right, you'd had, you'd, you'd said that this is this is a horror short. Uh, horror can it's, it's a pretty broad umbrella. You get all different types of horror. Um, you know, horror for humanity, horror dealing with monsters, horror dealing with the super magic. How would you classify the horror on this one? Uh-huh. Uh, well, it'll be psychological, and it will be monsters. It'll be those two. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, and just, just also remember, I uh, mentioned a film called Host mm-hmm. that was on Shudder, which is the premier um, horror channel in the right. United States. That, that film is 56 minutes long, and it, it was number one on Shudder. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And it, it's it, it's it's below sixty, and in my book, it's not a feature. Um, you know, some people will classify it as a feature, but fifty six minutes is not, and it's a really good film. So uh, it's one one way I sold it, sold vacations to the investors, is that uh, number one, it could be sold by itself as a short. Uh, so anybody who's thinking of contributing, you know, just keep that in mind that you know we thought about this. You know, we did our research about films like Host. Um, number two, it's again will be uh, part of the eventual feature. And again, characters like um, uh, some of the cameos could come back in the feature. Uh, Olivia, Sean, uh, Tracy character, they'll come back in the feature, and they know this. Um, and again, the feature is, this is part of the feature, so <laughs> this is like the first 25% of the feature. So it's the first act of the feature, if you will. You know, they'll, they'll come back in act two and act three. So, you know, and, and this is all planned. So just, just, I guess, keep that in mind that, um, that yeah, we, we thought about this. You know, when, if you contribute to this, you're contributing uh, to the long-term goal, if you will. Very, um, I, and, okay. Yeah. This sounds really... Yeah, and it, it's, uh, Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, it, it, there's, the, the possibilities are endless, and that, that's what excites me. Mm-hmm. Is that I have the camera. We have we have what it you know we, we know we can film forty percent of this, um, and then forty percent is not part of the twenty five percent. Part of it is, but not all of it. You know, so let's say an additional I don't know thirty thirty five percent can be filmed with the technique I described, staring at the camera. You know, with a green screen, and uh, we can shoot uh, where I live. You know, in Cal in California, SoCal, mm-hmm. Southern California. Um, you know, or you could do it over the webcam or whatever. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. Uh, we can do commercials, we can do game shows, we could just, you know, you could be a YouTuber, just, you know, saying, is this real? You know, what is this pandemic? You know, what's going on? You know, you know, I don't think it's real. You know, so we have like people doing that. You know, people do that now, you know, mm-hmm. on TikTok, on, on Twitch. These are some channels I don't even know what they are. Some people had to tell me. You know, <laughs> but I mean, the, uh, you know, Zoom, Zoom conferencing, Skype, uh, FaceTime, you know, people do this. This is what they do in the year 2020 and it's going to be 2021. Um, this, is just, this is our reality, you know, and that's why we're incorporating that into the film, into staycation short and staycation feature, because people can associate with that because that's what's happening right now. So, you know, the possibilities are endless. Cool. And, you know, I, I just hope uh, people want to join us. That well, okay. With, so, enjoy. so with that, um, how can people learn more about this Indiegogo campaign? So um, you can go to uh, if you type on Indiegogo, um, you can go to uh, it's a staycation horror finish funds with Star Trek actors. So that's one way. Number two, you can go um, to um, my website, russem.com, that's Russem Productions. It's a combination of my first and last name, Russell Emanuel. Um, and then you can be linked there. Uh, on FaceTime, FaceTime, I'm sorry, on Facebook, 
Uh, there's a Facebook uh, report slash staycation movie. Cool. And then you can look it up that way. So, um, yeah. I mean, there, there's various ways. Um, you can go to the, uh, the campaign. And uh, about any, is, and any social media presence for you personally, in case anybody wants to learn more about what you do? <laughs> uh, Russin.com, the website I uh, mentioned. Um, uh, you know, you can see, um, basically, I've, um, I, I've directed five feature films already. That's under my belt. Um, I've directed actors like uh, Robert Picardo. I, I directed the late John Hurd. Um, you know, bless him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Vincent Pastore. Um, I, I've directed uh, Star Trek actors like Marina Sirtis. This is um, wonderful, you know, to direct Counselor Troy. Mm-hmm. That was something. <laughs> um, Armin Shimmerman, who was Quark mm-hmm. on uh, Deep Space Nine. Uh, Gary Graham, mm-hmm. who was uh, Ambassador Saval on Enterprise. Um, but he was also in, like, Alien Nation. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's, you know, I... I been fortunate to direct the uh, name actors, you know, um, and some of them, it seems, I'm very grateful that they want to work with me again. <laughs> I'm just, you know, very grateful about that. So, you know, people like Bob Ricardo who love to work with them again, Marina and all, all of them. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, that's my background. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I do thank TG Geeks for, you know, what you've done to help promote, especially Occupants. Oh, uh, well. you know my fourth feature. Oh, that was so, that was know, uh, a lot I, of fun. I remember, we, yeah, yeah, we were at uh, was the Phoenix Comic Con. Yep, and correct. We, we went to uh, you had this very posh hotel room and uh, posh. You know, I was there. Uh, Julia, the writer, Julia Cameron was there. Yep, Brianna, Brianna White was there. Our lead actress, Michael Pugliasi, our lead actor. I remember it was it was a very fun time. Yeah, yeah. it was a great time. Uh, well, you do good work. I mean, we were very. Yeah. Th- Occupants was one of the mm-hmm. smartest uh, found footage movies I've ever seen. So, uh, I you know, I, yeah, I, you. I I put a lot of faith into what you do, and I'm very excited and very interested to see where the staycation is going to go now. Yeah, and well, thank you so much thank for you. being on our show. This is Michael R. Menengay of Slice of Sci Fi, Winging It, and Dragon Page. You are listening to the Two Gay Geeks. Oh, how nice to hear the voice of our podfather. Yeah. I miss the men and gays. I do, too. Moved off to Texas and left us here in Phoenix all by ourselves. Yeah, well, they've been wanting to for they've been wanting to move there, according yeah, to Lori. For, for quite a while. Yeah. Here's a few selected birthdays for December 7th through uh, December 13th, 2020. December December 7th, Gerard Kuiper, Kuiper, if you want to say it in the proper Dutch uh, way. I was wondering. A Dutch astronomer. He's considered to be the father of modern planetary science. Hmm. He was uh, his dissertation advisor for Carl Sagan as well. Oh, that I didn't know. Yeah. He also uh, moved to Tucson in 1960 to found the Lunar and Planetary Laboratory at the U of A. And they did some work uh, finding places uh, to land on the moon for the Apollo missions. Oh, how about that? Yeah. And uh, the Kuiper belt of comets, planetoids, and planetesimals. Beyond well, Uranus. what's that last one? Planetesimals? Yeah. I don't know that word. Yeah. I am Okay, that's new. I, I had not heard that one before. Yeah. Uh, Beyond Uranus is uh, named after him. And then we have Nicholas Holt, actor. He was X-Men. Uh, uh, oh. He was the Beast. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he plays Beast. Yeah. And he actually played Tolkien in, in Tolkien. That's right, he did. And he played uh, Nikola Tesla in The Current War, which oh, is a great yes. film. Fabulous movie. And once, uh, while in full beast costume, ran onto a golf course and gave golfers some tips and then ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> And we have a good friend of our of mine from high school, Julie Stiglitz Regal, and a good friend of ours, Daz Anderson. Happy Darren birthday, Anderson. Darren! Yes, December eighth, 
David Carradine, actor. Without him, we wouldn't know about Kung Fu. Uh, you know, it, it's it's hard. <laughs> Maybe. It's hard to say. <laughs> Maybe. It, it's kind of hard to say. It wouldn't have quite the... Um, it, it, it wouldn't be in the lectionary of knowledge. True, I would say. you know, and the neat thing about that is, at least with the show that he worked on, it it wasn't so much about the martial arts fighting; it was a lot about the philosophy and the thoughts that went behind it. Exactly. And so it, it it became a very thoughtful show, which is one of the reasons I liked it so much. Yeah, well, and we wouldn't have the grasshopper meme either. Oh, that's true too. Yeah, so. And uh, he was actually fascinated by Eastern philosophy all of his life and uh, really kind of brought it into his life and wrote several books on the Shaolin uh, philosophy and, and whatnot. So. And he had one heck of a comeback oh with my gosh. the Kill Bill movies. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, oh it's a shame that he died not long after that because he had some really good things in the pipeline as far as his movie career was going. But, yeah. you know, he left us a great legacy. Yep. And then we have Terry Hatcher, actress, Lois and Clark, Supergirl. And what should happen? To, okay, so we're recording this on a Saturday. Yep. And yes, yesterday, was it yesterday, it was yeah. on Friday. <laughs> on my Facebook history, there's a picture of me with Terry Hatcher because we just happened to bump into her at Disney's California Adventure. She was actually there for a reason, but I just happened to see her there, and she was more than happy to take a photo with me. And she's short. <laughs> because I'm short. Yeah. And she actually was in Desperate Housewives, where she was injured quite a number of times on set. Uh, that I didn't oh, know. Oh, yeah, yeah. But she appeared in every single episode of that series. I love her. I think she's yep. amazing. And then we have a Facebook friend of ours, Emily Black. December 9th. Oh, my gosh. Judy Dench. Ju oh, what do you so say about Dan Judy Dench? Things. So many things. James Bond, Best Exotic Marigold World, uh, Marigold World, Marigold World, <laughs> Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Uh, she was just she was great in that. Oh, there's a, oh and no, there's a, a movie. A there's a movie that she did. Um, it's set in World War II, and she is opening up what's basically a burlesque theater. Yeah, what, what, oh, I can't think shoot. of the name of it. The name escapes Mrs. me. Mrs. Something or other. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah, think of yeah. the name of it, but oh my God, she was fantastic in it. This is a woman who can do anything again. I mean, yeah. she can do some really serious drama, and that, that that's probably why she got, you know, she received the title of Dame, but she can turn around and do some beautiful dry comedy. Yep. And then we have Donny Osmond, singer, entertainer. Who almost fell in my lap at a concert. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, th this was back, um, <coughs> excuse me, this was in 1984, uh, summer of 84. He and um, uh, his sister Marie were doing their Donnie Marie tour, and they came to uh, Pleasanton. I, I lived in Livermore, California. They came to Pleasanton, which was the seat of the county I lived in, and they were going to be doing some shows there, and it was the very first time. Usually there's only two shows in the, in the, the, the fairgrounds amphitheater. And because of the turnout, they actually did three shows. So my mom and I got to be there for the third show. And uh, they're doing you know, a bunch of more of the current stuff. But then he does his medley of his old songs, you know, when he was just, you know, the, the teenage, you know, the, the, the teenage kid, you know, uh, and he was doing Puppy Love. And he's walking up uh, the seats and he's standing next to me. And there are all these adult women who are in their 40s and they're pawing at him like they were 17 all over again and there was a security guard who just happened to be standing there and had that security guard not been there he would have fallen into my lap wow he did you know he debuted on the andy williams show oh yeah one day after his sixth birthday yep and so i from the time and I actually know what it is that he did. Um, he was supposed to be singing along with his four older brothers. Yep. And instead he did, Vodio do do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Marie tells that story. I saw that. And that, that's, that was his big debut. He screamed that out at the end of a number. And I guess that sealed his fame. I guess. And then we have Michael Dorn. 
Worf. Uh, actor best known as Worf. Best Captain, friend. I am not a merry man. Exactly. Best friends with Marina Sirtis. Yes. And was considered for the role of the master in the American Doctor Who. You know, that might have actually been better than Eric Roberts. <laughs> you never know. He's also an accomplished pilot and has flown with the Blue Angels. I did know that. Yeah. Then we have uh, Joshua Bell, violinist. Uh, I put him on here because we saw the video uh, at the musical instrument oh, uh, museum yeah. of him at a very early age. He was uh, he's a prodigy. He, yeah, he was a prodigy. Uh, apparently, at the age of four, he would stretch rubber bands across the drawers of his dresser and pluck out music he heard his mother play on the piano. Wow. Okay, so, I'm impressed. Yeah, they finally got bought him a violin and... And decided, but they they hadn't before because they they thought he was too small. So they found a a, a child size violin, and he's he's a great violinist. Oh, he's a phenomenal. And then we have a Facebook friend and a friend of yours, Andy Athey, yep. and Anthony DeJoya of uh, Silver Screen Partner or Silver Screen. Oh gosh, cinema! I uh, I think shoot. that's on YouTube. He's, yeah, uh, does. Uh, reviews and then Tina Lambert December 10th Kenneth Branagh actor director director everything yes <laughs> uh, he was in Poirot in Murder in the Orient, Orient, Orient Express and Murder on the Orient Express and the new one and he'll be playing Poirot again in Death on the in Nile in Death on the Nile yep with Chamber of Secrets was married to Emma Thompson at one time. Yep. Uh, Marvel, when he was uh, selected to be the director of the Thor, uh, uh, one of the Thor movies. The first Thor film. Yep. He was sent the entire Thor comic book series by Marvel because he's been a fan since he was a child. It shows because there are so many cinematic moments that scream... The, uh, some iconic scenes from the entire comic book line, and and I, I thought Brownot did a brilliant job on that first film. Yep, and then Dorothy Lamour, actress, a glamorous leading lady in uh, <clears throat> her. She did a lot of the with the Bob Hope and Bing Crosby oh. uh, on the road film the, the, or in the on the road two films, uh-huh. and uh, from the seventies until her death at eighty one. She did the usual cameos in everything. Love American Style, Marcus mm. Welby, Love Boat, Heart didn't, to Heart. Oh, yeah, but Just didn't everything. so. But a lot of actors at that point were doing the same thing. I mean, yep. it was sort of chic to do that. Exactly. And then we have a good friend of ours from way back in the Slice days, Kurt Armbruster. Oh, Kurt from Calgary. Kurt from Calgary, or Kurt A. As he's mm. referred to, E H on right <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah, December eleventh, Hector Bellios, composer, was not successful during his lifetime because his operas were too large. Oh God! In fact, La Troyan. I was going to say La Troyan was so big that it was never performed together during his lifetime. I'm and, not surprised. Um, it finally, after, you know, he died, it, it was put together. And, and it's still a freaking tome. Yeah. And it, it's so hard to sing. And then he also did Benvenuto Cellini. It's another, another one. That's just a, brutal. It'll kill a, people. A tenor killer. Yeah, it, yes. it will. It will kill you if you yeah. try to sing it. It'll ruin your career. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it's rarely performed. Uh, but both offers have some really lovely music in them. It's it's amazing. Yep. Ben Browder, actor. Oh my goodness. Farscape and SG1. I love the fact that he got to star again with his same co-stars from SG1 uh, from, from uh, Farscape into SG1. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. And he, interesting thing is, he, do you know what his favorite movie is? I'm about to be surprised, aren't I? Yeah, it's a yikes. Jeremiah Johnson. Really? The Robert yes. Redford film? Yes. I remember seeing that. Oh, in the I theater. did too when oh it came my out. Oh, God. I, I liked it. I, I did but too, it's like, but yikes. Geez, it, it like, I, I think it was. Is there four, a purpose? <laughs> it was three weeks long. Yeah, the movie was. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I went into the theater. It was nighttime. I came back out. It was day. Exactly. And then we have Dick Tufeld. 
actor, voiceover actor, narrator, announcer for Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, oh, Time yeah. Tunnel, anything, the Judy th- Garland show, yeah, and he was the robot in Lost in Space. Where'd it go? I lost it. Oh, you yeah. can barely hear it. I, I, but he, yeah, he was very much involved with anything that Irwin Allen was doing on telly. Oh, yeah. And he was the voice of Gallo Wines for many years. And when they decided to change the ad agencies, he was not invited to audition. Hmm. And so he submitted a tape under an assumed name. And when the ad manager realized that they had forgotten to give him an invitation, hmm. they sent him an invitation. <laughs> and, th- and then he was told that he was two out of the three finalists that they had. Yeah. <laughs> so his assumed name and his real name both got in <laughs> yep and gallo decided they didn't want to change the talent so they stuck with uh, with him i didn't realize that was him i mean i remember that that a uh, slug you know will, ser- will, will sell no wine before it's time i didn't realize that was him yep and then we have a facebook friend and a friend of patricia chica's uh, actually co-work co uh writer and director author with um Patricia Chica, Kamal Iskander, and Des Demise, and Mr. Jason, Mr. T. Jason Gaffney. Gaffney. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Jason. Jason. December 12th, Edvard Munch, painter, most famous for his iconic The Scream. Oh, yeah. He was a Norwegian uh, painter. Interestingly enough, even though he described it as the enormous, infinite scream of nature... He suffered from a hereditary, a hereditary mental illness, and so it really was about the primal scream of an individual. It has a, a, a very strong horror um, sense to it yeah, if, when you look at it. One of the most recognized uh, iconic paintings well, in it, the world. Well, it, it features a night gallery all the time. Yeah, exactly. Harry Warner, co-founder with his brothers Jack, Sam, and Albert of Warner Brothers Studios. Dion Warwick. How about that? How about that? Singer, sometimes referred to as the Princess of Pop, first cousin of Whitney Houston. Yep, I knew that. Yep, and worked with Burt Bacharach and Hal, Hal David for many years, mm-hmm. and probably her most remembered song and Grammy winner. Um. Oh, good grief. Do you know the way to San Jose? Yeah, I thought as much. Yep. And then we have uh, uncle of our uh, good friend Hamish Downey, John Downey, who died a couple of years ago. Happy birthday, John, in heaven. December 13th, Dick Van Dyke, actor. What can you say about Mary this Poppins? man? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, we got to see Among him so live. Many others. Oh, my God. Reprise his role as uh, the old elder Mr. Mr. Dawes. The elder Mr. Dawes. Uh, for, for the, the live, stage version. Yeah. And the man danced like he was still 30. It was, it, it was, he got a standing ovation the moment he walked out on yep. stage. It stopped the show. Yeah. And then afterwards there was a, a Q and a with him and, and some of the, uh, uh, talent in the show yeah. as well. And he was, um, before he got into acting, he worked at a radio station in Danville, Illinois as the news guy and spun records huh. for, for those youngsters that don't know what they used what to a record radio. is <laughs> exactly what, what, what's a 45 <laughs> that's a 45 what's this funny little spindle thing in the middle <laughs> exactly december 13th also is mr tony curran actor oh my goodness gracious me defiance on the uh the, on siffy the, on siffy and then he was doctor who uh or he van, was in doctor who as van, van Gogh. Gogh. A Scottish-born actor, uh, born in Glasgow. Amazing guy, and so wonderful to talk to when yep. we interviewed him with Slice. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it was during the Defiance days. Defiance was just about to premiere. Yep. And that's it for the birthdays this time. Technorama, the podcast for geeks, because geeks are better than cool. You don't hear someone say, get away from me, you cool person. Who's going to have their 65-inch home theater system installed by the cool squad? Not me, that's for sure. 
How much cool cred do you have? Not enough to care about. Think you'll find any canned unicorn meat at thinkcool.com? It's just a part domain name. They don't even have roadkill in a paper cup. That's why you need to start listening to Technorama, because that's what geeks do. Go to chuckchat.com and listen to Technorama before you turn cool. Go give a listen to our friends over at uh, Technorama Podcast, Chuck and Craig. And uh, he's going to be on our show here next week, I think. A couple of weeks, yeah. I'm Daniel Radcliffe, and I believe that reaching out for help is the bravest thing a person can do. If you are struggling and need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at 1-866-488-7386. It's free and confidential, and trained counsellors are there to listen 24-7 without judgment. To learn more about the Trevor Project's life-saving work for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning young people, go to thetrevorproject.org. It's the feedback time, and uh, all of these items that we will be talking about will be featured in the show notes for this episode at tggeeks.com. And while we're on that subject, I do want to emphasize uh, with the interview that we had with Russ Emanuel, he mentioned some really interesting things that are attached to his Indiegogo campaign. I really would recommend people, you know, no matter how you listen to this episode, please go to our website at tggeeks.com. Look for episode 303 and read, uh, you know, follow up all the links and see yep. all of the lovely benefits you can get by being a contributor to his campaign. Exactly. Anyway, moving on. Regarding TG Geeks episode number 300, got a comment from our good friend Corey Nelson. Yay, Corey. She says, 300, yay, congratulations and thank you for continuing to give us entertaining content. Love you both. Love you too, we Corey. love you too, Corey. Then we got a couple of messages regarding TG Geeks episode number 301. Uh, first, a couple of birth- birthday thank yous. First from uh, your, your old boss, B, B. B. Tyrone Green. She says, thank you. Then we got a comment from, uh, he's the son of a good friend of ours, uh, Bailey Hall. He says, aw, thanks, guys. And then we got a comment from Hamish Downey, and he's just simply commenting about the episode in general. And he left this on Instagram, and he said, it's a really lovely episode. Oh, cool. And then got a comment from Corey, and she says, I love when you two chatter. <laughs> Thank you. And then got a comment from Andrew Island. This one made me laugh because he left feedback previously and we read it. And I told him we were going to share that feedback. And he says, Ben, Keith, listen to your podcast just to hear you quote me and comment on my comment. Oh, Thank cool. you. That's never happened before, I think. Well, Andrew, we just commented just on your comment comment again. On a comment, yeah. Yep. And then we close this off regarding Ben's gay breakdown. <laughs> Uncle Frank tells of a time best not forgotten. Got a comment from Carpe Diem on Twitter. And they wrote, excellent review of Uncle Frank. My husband and I just watched it. He had read about it a bit beforehand, but I went in having no idea of the content. We agreed with your take on this. Loved the performances, especially the three leads. Film was, at times, brutal, but always honest. And that is our feedback for this week. Absolutely. You can leave comments on anything that we publish, whether it's on our uh, website at tggeeks.com, an article or on our podcast or anything that we publish there. You can comment on our Facebook page. You can comment on our Twitter, Instagram, any place that you find comment section, you can leave a comment. You can also call us and leave us a voicemail if you want. And you can be famous just like us. You can call 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357. And as always, Please play nice. Well, as everybody knows, we are huge supporters of independent creators, just like Russ is an independent creator, whether it's filmmakers, comic book artists, writers, or others. And especially during this time of the uh, the great pause, the pandemic, uh, most of the con convention scene has disappeared and Even though there's some online stuff, it's just not like visiting a convention where you get to see all of the creators and all of their work. Please go to their websites, their Etsy pages, their Twitter pages, their uh, Facebook pages. Talk to them, talk to other people about them, and buy their stuff. Please support independent 
creators. The Joshua Tree Feeding Program is a 501c3 nonprofit food pantry for the HIV and AIDS community in Maricopa and Pinal counties. They have the place set up like a store so that clients can pick and choose what food they prefer so that it empowers the clients and no food is wasted. Please consider supporting Joshua Tree Feeding Program either through a single gift or a monthly recurring gift. You can do that at jtfp.org. If you are trans or are questioning your gender identity, and if you are in crisis or are feeling isolated and need someone to talk to, or you know of someone in a similar situation, there is a special hotline just for you. The hotline is provided by translifeline.org and staffed by trained counselors who are transgender themselves. The hotline in the U.S. is 877-565-8860. In Canada, it is 877-330-6366. Or you can go to translifeline.org to learn about the important work they are doing. Please reach out for help. You are not alone. Yeah, baby. They're like two gay geeks. They're together, you know. They're two gay guys and they're geeks. Is that okay? I got a couple of things I want to talk about. Before we do, uh, this this just broke about 20 minutes ago. David Lander from Laverne and Shirley, who played Squiggy, just passed away at the age oh, of 73. Dear. Oh, my gosh. Well, I knew that he was having health problems. Yeah. He'd, he'd been dealing with multiple sclerosis for a long oh. time. 37 years, in fact. Wow. Yeah. So it, I'm, I'm saddened that, that he passed away. I mean, the guy was a really great talent. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay, so we just saw a movie on the Disney Plus streaming service, and we waited to watch it because there was a lot of political controversy surrounding it. I wasn't, I, I didn't feel comfortable shelling out any extra money to see it, but it was just made free for all Disney Plus subscribers, and we watched it, and that was the live action version of Mulan. Wow. What a film. Uh, you know, politics notwithstanding, I think this movie is brilliant. I thought it, I thought it was great. It was amazing. <clears throat> it truly was. I, it, it was absolutely beautiful. I love the way it was shot. Uh, there was some wonderful um, signature moments that took you back to the animated film, especially yep. the music. And some of the callbacks in the, uh, yeah, in in the, the score. Oh, yeah. the callbacks were just, I mean, really, really emotional. I, I thought it was just touching. And uh, I, I, it was a very empowering film, I think, for women. In its own way, and it, it's just, it was a beautiful film. Um, I love the fact that they got a lot of very good uh, Chinese talent, yeah, to, to work in this. It, it, it was wonderful. Um, I'm sorry that it that there was a lot of political um, backlash yeah. to it. That's a shame, uh, you know. But there it is. Nonetheless, it's a wonderful movie. Um, if you get a chance to see it, I would recommend you do so. Yeah. Um, also, want to uh, alert something to any of you who has, you know, is aware of Katie Edwards. We've had him on the show numerous times. He's the author of the tarot sequence of books. He's got two out at the moment, first being The Last Son and then The Hanged Man. And he's working on Tarot 3 at the moment. He does little um, collections of short stories that set that are set in the, the tarot universe. He's already done several. Uh, he did... a. You see, he did one called the Sunken Mall. Right. He then then he did a whole series of uh, little scenes. Uh, he called the quarantine scenes, it, and there was Katie's own little, like little therapy in order to deal with the pandemic uh, from his own point of view. So he wrote these great scenes with the characters, the primary characters from his tarot sequence books. And now he's going to be doing another one, holiday scenes, and he's going to be sharing those on Twitter. And I just uh, chatted with him a little while ago. He hopes to have those ready by Friday. Oh, cool. So uh, if you if you are a fan of his, please, you need to check him out. And you can do that. Uh, the best way to do that is just go to Twitter and look for him. He's at KD Edwards underscore NC. Do that. Follow him. He's always posting some really great stuff there. He's already shared one very humorous little scene about um, the walls at Sun Estate that yeah. had uh, – <laughs> that was really cute. So I would definitely recommend that. I mean, and, and he, it, I'm looking forward to it. He's very engaged with his followers oh, yeah. and his fans. Yeah. So 
It's great. And I'm guessing this, you want to talk about um, disco. Yes, I want to talk about disco. Actually, this, that short for Star Trek Discovery. Uh-huh. Um, I, the reason I want to talk about that is because... Oh, I know why you want to talk the, about it. It was such a, an empowering episode yes. this last week. Um, seriously, uh, when, and I'm not going to give anything away, but when Blue Dobario, uh, is character and is a non-binary character and they prefer the pronouns they, Mm -hmm. they and them, they and them. And it was, um, it It was very well done. It was very well done in that scene. There was also at the end of the, um, the credits, a shout out to the Trans Lifeline, which we always do, and also to the Trevor Project, and, and also on um, the Ready Room. There was yeah. two; both they ran both of those uh, for Trevor Project and Trans Lifeline. Yes, so, and something that I, I really think it's liked, really important, and th- that I thought was beautiful when when the character uh, said, "I you know, call me they, don't call me she, call me they." Right. Uh, and then it's and then express you know I I don't feel being I, I don't feel comfortable being thought of as she I like being called they or them and then you looked at Stamets and he and, says okay and he just has this really warm smile yep that was it, it just made the entire scene so ridiculously beautiful I I, I applaud Discovery for doing that yeah, it, it, and, it was a wonderful moment and I would encourage you if you do watch. Um, this episode, watch the ready room with yeah. Will Wheaton afterward because they he does uh, Will does a uh, interview with Blue Del Barrio and Ian Alexander. Yep, and they are both just brilliant, wonderful people, uh, young people. Yes. <laughs> And this is the time where we go over all of the things that we ran on our website at tjgeeks.com. This is our weekly review, starting with Sunday. Oh, yeah, and I should point out, yeah, the links for each of these will be in the show notes for this episode, number yep. 303 at tjgeeks.com. Starting with Sunday, November 29th, Nerdy Chupacabras, number 24. On Monday the 30th, TG Geeks episode number 302. Wow. Wow. On uh, December... January, oh my God. December, January Jan- Jan- Yeah, I, I got so derailed there. Yeah, yeah, January's in December. I, didn't you know that? Uh, on Tuesday, December 1st, Ben's breakdown of the Frasier episode, The Apparent Trap. I would recommend people take a look at that because oh I give some behind the scenes because we were there. Yes. When they, when they taped that episode, we were in the audience. So if you want to know more about our take on that, please read that. You'll enjoy it. On Wednesday the 2nd, Christmas Classics of Jeannie Koch, Nightmare Before Christmas. Also, Russ Emanuel launches Indiegogo campaign for new film Staycation. On Thursday the 3rd, Andrea's Angle, Half Brothers is endearingly funny. And, and, and the publicist has the picked pub- up a yeah. couple of uh, her quotes from yeah, that. Yeah, there film. is some talk that maybe some of what Andrea said might be featured as part of the studio's marketing campaign. Go, Andrea! And then on Friday the 4th, Ben's Breakdown, there is no power with silence. No, good grief. Listen to me. There is power with silence in Sound of Metal. Which was a brilliant film. Fabulous movie. I loved it. Also, Matcha and Vanilla drops original Christmas Carol. That's a press release we got from Hamish Downey. And we close off the week on the 5th. This Got Made, Season 2, Episode B, Red Fox. Have to give a couple of shout outs first to the Arkle Times Post Dispatch News for republishing our content from time to time. It is put up by the human Arkle Brian Weber. Find the Post Dispatch News by finding him on Twitter. Do that for, by searching for Arkle at A R K L E. Look for Arkle Studios also on YouTube, youtube.com slash Arkle Studios, all one word. Brian has a number of his projects there, his Shameless Cash Grab series, his Rants vs. Zombie series, and his game videos of Trick and Treat, as well as Star Trek Online, and they are entertaining, because I did actually watch one of the Star Trek Onlines, and I enjoyed it. 
Also, we must give some shout outs to a couple of Facebook groups for allowing us to post our episodes and relevant articles on their pages. First two, the Gay Geeks After Hours. When I asked their moderators if we could share our content there, they said, please share away. And their URL is facebook.com slash groups slash Gay Geeks After Hours. And then to The Gay Geek for also allowing us to share our stuff there. And their URL is facebook.com slash groups slash The Gay Geek. And as always, we must give special thanks to their moderator, Jeremiah Reeves. And we can also be found on Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, as well as where other fine podcasts can be found. Also, check us out on Krypton Radio at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific Time on Tuesdays. And listen to their other content. They're a 24-hour geeky internet radio station. Please rate us and review us on iTunes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, that's it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article for this webcast episode. We'll have several links on the page of things that we talked about, as well as other things. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page or our website, tggeeks.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 469-TG-Geeks. That is 469-844-3357 from TG Squared Studios. I'm Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. Please be kind to yourself and those around you. Stay home, stay safe. Peace. Cheers. Cheers.